Hello and welcome back. Now that we understand Lambda and Kappa architectures, today we are going to process files utilizing the Kappa architecture. We are going to read JSON files which will contain device data and we are going to flatten out the data and print in console and again we will write those files in CSV format. We will also see different options that are available to process files in Spark streaming. So before we can start consuming these files, let's understand how this JSON files would look like. On my screen is an example device JSON file that we are going to consume. It contains certain field informations like event ID, event offset, publisher, customer ID and again we have data for devices in form of list. And this list contains the data for each of the device. As you can see, this is one block of device data and this is second block of device data. And each block of device data contains device ID, temperature, measure, is it in Celsius or Fahrenheit and the status of that device. Again, we also have event time for each of the payload that we consume as files. We are going to flatten out data in form of a tabular structure. So once we flatten out this data, the data will be displayed in a linear tabular format. You can have the keys of that JSON file in form of columns. So we will have event ID, event offset, event publication and all other columns including the columns for each of the device data which is device ID, temperature, measure, status and event time. And once we flatten out this data, first we are going to display this in console and again we are going to write this data in CSV format using up and out mode. So now that you understand what we are going to do today, let's begin. Now I am in my Jupyter Lab environment. As usual, we'll start by generating our Spark session. Today I have added one more config in my Spark session which says stop gracefully on shutdown. It implies whenever we shut down our streaming application, it will make sure that all of the required data which is in line will be processed and then the streaming pipeline would be shut down gracefully. So let's generate our Spark session first. Awesome, my Spark session is generated. Now for today's session, I'll place all the input files in the input folder under data and we will have device files under this device file folder. I have few samples ready. I'll just copy one of the sample into that folder. So I'll copy this file into the input device file folder. Now let's go ahead and write our batch code first in order to flatten out the JSON data. Once that is done, we will convert that code in streaming format. So let's start that by reading the data with the help of a data frame which is streaming DF. So I'll use this streaming DF and to read the data, I'll write spark dot read dot our format is JSON and we'll read the data from data input device files. We created our streaming DF. Let's run print schema to view that data frame. So I'll run print schema. As you can see, Spark has successfully passed all the columns present in that device data. Now, since we have devices data in form of list inside that payload, we first need to explode that out. And we know that in order to explode the data, we can use the explode function which is present under from. Great. Let's write our explode data frame now. So I'll copy explode df. I'll write it as we'll read the streaming df and we will explode the data with, with column. Now we need to explode this devices array which is present under data. So if we go back to our payload, you can see this is the data which is a struct field and under this we have devices which is an array field. So we need to explode this devices array. So let's create a column called data underscore devices. And to explode this, we'll write explode and we'll put data dot devices. Let's run this. Nice. Let's view the schema of the exploded data frame. So I'll run this. Awesome. You can see the data devices is being exploded. Let's go ahead and view the data in order to understand it more. So I'll run this so command as well. So let me just zoom out for a bit. Now you can see since our payload contain two JSON data, this has been exploded in two rows and we have the devices data under data devices. So let's go ahead and drop this data column which is no longer required because we have exploded the data and we will expand this devices data into multiple columns to flatten it out. Awesome. Now that we have exploded our data frame, let's go ahead and flatten out devices data which is present under the data devices column. Now, if you see the data devices column is a struct fit. In order to get the data columns which is present in a struct field, we use dot notation. So let's go ahead and write our flattened data frame. So I'll name the data frame as flattened df and we will write it from the exploded data frame. So I'll use the exploded df and first let me drop the data column which is no longer required. So I'll write drop data and we will create new columns with the same name that we have for the columns. So we will have devices, measure status and temperature as column names and we will flatten out the data from this data devices. So to do that, I'll write with column 
and we need to get the device id so i'll write device id as the new column itself and we need to get the column from that struct so i'll write call in order to help spark identify the dot notation so i'll write devices data dot device id so we will create a new column called device id which will have the data from data devices dot device id let's go ahead and create the similar remaining three columns so i'll quickly write the code for them Awesome. Now that we have written our flattened data frame, before we can run this, let's go ahead and import the column function. So I'll write from. Let's run this. Nice. Let's go ahead and print the schema. Awesome. If you see, we have now flattened the data. Let's go ahead and view this data first. So I'll run the so command. Nice. Let me just zoom out a bit. Great. We have the four columns that contains the device data and the data is flattened out. Let's go ahead and drop this data devices column because we have already flattened out the data and this column is no longer required. So in order to do that, let me put the drop in the end, which will drop this column, which is data devices. Let me rerun this. Again, print schema and so. Nice. Let's just zoom out. Awesome. We have flattened out our data successfully. Now you can see we have all the columns in a tabular format. And the data is exploded in multiple rows, which was there in the array field as well. Okay, now that we have our batch code ready for flattening out the JSON data, let's go ahead and convert this code in streaming. So I'll quickly scroll to the top. Our Spark session will still remain same. Next, for streaming DF, in order to make sure that Spark infers or read the schema for the streaming data on runtime, we need to set one configuration. So I've already put it here. You can see this configuration. This is spark.sql.streaming.schema inference as true. Now, you might be knowing infer schema from the batch code, but for streaming, in order to make Spark read the schema on runtime, you need to set up this configuration. Again, we need to change the read to read stream. So I'll write read stream and I'll put it in next line. Now, we will add two more options here. First is to make sure that as and when Spark processes or reads the file, it moves the file to an archive directory. To do that, I'll first use one option which is called clean source. And I'll make this as archive. Now, for clean source, we have three options. The first and the default one is off. So when you don't specify anything, Spark will do nothing. The input files will still be lying in the input directory. Now, the second one is delete. If you specify the delete option, Spark will delete the file as soon as it reads the input file. Third one is archive. Now, in a production scenario, you don't want to delete the file. Rather, you want to archive the file. So, we have specified the clean source as archive. Now, with clean source as archive, you also need to provide the folder location where Spark will move the files. To do that, we need to add one more option. So, I'll write option. And this is source archive dir. And I'll name this archive directory as archive dir. Nice. We'll add one more option here. So, that option would be max file per trigger now why do we need this option this option will make sure that spark consumes the number of files that you have specified in this option at a single go so i'll put it as one for now so what will happen is at each micro batch run spark will only consume one file and if you don't specify this option spark will try to consume as many as files are present in that input directory now to make things work perfectly we need to provide this option in production scenarios now our code for streaming df is ready let's run this Great. We can still see the print schema. So I'll run this. Awesome. We have the same schema here. Let's go ahead and run the explode data frame command. This will still remain same. So I'll run this. Now I'll suppress the so command here because that is not required. And we will still run the print schema. Awesome. We have the same schema. Let's go ahead and run the flatten df command. So I'll run this. Now I'll suppress the so command here and we'll still see the schema. Awesome. Our data is being flattened. Great. Now that our flattening data frame is ready, let's go ahead and write this in our console. So to do that, I'll use the flatten df dot write stream. And the format would be console. And we will start it. And we also know that we need to add a wait termination. So before I run this, let me go ahead and clean up the console. So I will come back to the logs in Docker and I'll clean up the console. Awesome. Now there's one more thing that we need to specify is the output mode. So I'll write output mode. And this time we will use append mode. 
let's go ahead and run this. Awesome. As soon as we run this, we see our first batch being processed here. Let's go ahead and put one more file here. So I'll go back to the samples directory that I have. And I'll copy the device to JSON from here. I'll go back to the input directory and I'll place the file in the device files. Nice. I'll refresh this. As soon as I refresh it, you see the first device file being removed here because that file has been archived. Now, if you see, batch one has been processed here. Great. Now that we can see our data in console properly, let's stop this and we will change our sync to five. So I'll stop this now. So let me clear out. Now I'll change our sync to files. So we'll write the CSV files in append output mode. So to do that, I'll use the same code, but I'll change the format as CSV. And the output mode still will be append. Now we need to specify one option here, which is path where we will write the data. So I'll use option path and I'll write the path as data output and we will write the device data dot csv which is our format now we will add one more option here which is the checkpoint directory so i'll write option checkpoint location and i'll name the checkpoint directory as checkpoint dir so this will create a directory called checkpoint dir which will store the metadata information such as offset and the files that are being processed so that even if we put the same file again spark will not process that file so we will see that before that let me go back to the parent folder and show you the archive directory so when we ran the code for the console an archive directory was created which contains the files that were archived so if i go into this folder you can see both the device files present in this folder so before we run this let me go ahead and clean out this archive directory Nice, our archive directory is now removed. Let's go back and run this code now. So as soon as I run this, if I re refresh here, you can see a checkpoint directory created. Let me go ahead in the output folder, data devices, you can see the first CSV file present. If I open this file, you can see the device's data. Now this file has been processed by the input file device 03, which was already present. Now, let me put one more file here. So I'll go to the samples. I'll copy the device 02 from here. Go back to the input folder. And I'll place the file here. Let me refresh this. The third file is gone now. If we go to the output directory. Great. Now you see one more file here. If I open this. You can see the device data processed by the second file here. Great. Now that we know our code is working fine, let's go ahead and see what is there in the checkpoint location. So I'll go back to the main folder. We can see the archive directory created and again the checkpoint directory. So I'll open the checkpoint directory and you can see multiple folders here. We will learn about checkpoint in our next session. But before that, let me show you one thing. So what happens if we try to process the same files again? Let me go ahead and copy the 03 file which was processed with on the very first time. So I'll go back and I'll try to put the same file in the input directory again. So I'll place the file here refresh you can see the device 02 file is still not moving because the device 03 file is not being processed as it is already registered in the checkpoint directory now if i go back and show you the output you will still see two files there see there are only two files the third file that we again tried to process is not processed because checkpoint directory tracks the metadata and this is what we are going to see in our next session i hope you learned how we can process files using spark streaming and this is the beginning for our Kappa architecture. In our next session, we are going to learn about checkpoint directories and we are going to see how checkpoint directory maintains the metadata in order to make sure that your data is processed properly even if you restart your streaming application. Till then, keep learning, keep growing, keep sharing.